Shabbat. Shabbat. Adonai. Welcome to the Six Exodus program again. Thank you for listening. Today, I want to talk to you about expressing expressing God. Today, there had been some strange teachings because we have had so many schisms in the church, uh, what we call the church, in the Christian Christian faith. I want to give a brief synopsis based on what all the the expressions or how the teachings have changed through the years. I'm not going to go into great detail. Just a brief synopsis, a brief overview as far as what the churches have believed in since the since the teachings of Christ. Since the teachings of Christ, there is only one God. Christ only taught one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Pure Israel, the Lord our God, is one, one Lord. Now, after the Christ ascended and went back to the heavens, and all the disciples was killed, the Catholic Church set up its demons in 325 A.D. at the Council of Nicaea and the Council of Constantinople, and they made their own religion by creating this thing called a Trinity, which they got it from the Egyptians with Horus, Isis, and Orion. They made up this Trinitarian doctrine that God is a Trinity. God has never been a Trinity. God is one. For the Bible says clearly, God is manifested in the flesh. That God was in the world, reconciling the world to himself. It is God. Now let me tell you the difference that, uh, that has been circulated throughout the world. The first teachings... It's I want to tell you about. It's called the oneness teaching, which is the oneness of God. That God is one, and that God was manifested in the flesh, in the likeness of man. In other words, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we do beheld Him, the visible image of Him, which was the Christ. Now I want to interject real quickly. Now, this is the year 2015, in the seventh year reign of the president called President Obama in the 12th month. We know today that the image, which is called the image of the beast, which is called Jesus, is not a person. It's just an image. It's the image of the beast, which is called Jesus, because Jesus is not a person. The Christ was a person, but the image is a painting of a man. It's an image that was made with a man's hand, and people call upon that image. And the Catholic Church has caused them to worship these idols. So this is the image, which is called the Son. Let me tell you, when you create these images... You go into idolatry because you don't believe that God is one. You are robbed when you don't believe that God is one. It is, It has been strategically planned that you should not believe in one God. Because if you take away the belief in one God and you take away and you say, well, God sent his son. Oh, brother, come on. No, God is the son. God is all. He is all in all. So there is one. It was he. he is our redeemer. He is our savior. He is the only one that has done this. Not God sent someone. It was God who was manifested in the flesh. As it is written, great is the mystery of godliness. 
for God was manifested in the flesh. Now, no one can take a picture of God or draw a picture of the Most High. No one, not even his son. No one. No one has a picture of the Most High. No one has a picture of Christ. And a picture that they drew, uh, the Catholic Church drew, it was drawn in the 1500s. Now, Christ was not around during the 1500s. Well, there's no image of him. There's no scans. There's no photograph. There's no drawings. There's no paintings. Okay. So you know that you're worshiping the image of the beast. That thing that is called Jesus is a name that the Catholic Church has infiltrated into the church and have you calling upon these demons. That thing that you're calling upon is a demon and God is going to judge you tremendously. An image that you made with your own hand and you're worshiping it. Okay, you're singing praises to it. You're crying to it. You made it with your own hands. And God is going to judge you for it. Now, the, what they tell you is the Trinity is three separate deities. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They tell you that there are three people. Three distinct personalities in heaven. That's what they teach the Trinity is. And many people believe this. They believe that there's a Father, there's a Son, and there's a Holy Ghost. The way they have written the Bible and they have interpreted it, they want you to believe that there are three persons in heaven. But my Bible says there's only one God. Now, that is the Trinitarian doctrine. Trinitarian doctrine was made up by the Catholic Church by a man named Trujillian in the Council of Nicaea, 325 A.D. Now, the second teachings that is in the, the Catholic Church or in Christendom is what people believe in. It's called a triune Godhead. Now, I want, I'll try to explain it to you in different ways so you can see it. Uh, for example, uh, water. Water can take on different uh, different attributes. It can be a solid, and a solid becomes ice. It can become a vapor, a steam, and then it can be liquid, which is water. Okay, so that's uh that's a trinity, or just like uh just like a light. Light can give off heat, it can give off light, and it can give off energy. That too is a trinity. Now, I want to tell you that uh, this is uh, it's called a triune Godhead, they call it a three in one, which the devil has gotten smart, kind of. He wants you to still believe that there's a threesome in God. You cannot put a number on God or put God in a box based on what you understand or what you think you understand God cannot be measured and he cannot be counted and he cannot be duplicated God is too vast he is too intelligent for you try to count God he is too deep God is one he can manifest himself in many ways you know he did now I want to say this to you um There are titles and attributes that God has. I see it clearly because I'm doing that now. Because the Lord, these are the last days. And God has called me to do different things. I understood it a little bit. But I couldn't express it well enough. Like I can now. Because I'm doing these things. The Lord has given me uh, two names. One of the names he gave me was Uriel. That's the first name he gave me. And the second name he gave me was Yeshurun. Now, I have a slave name. My slave name is Robert. Also, I have a Hawaiian name. My Hawaiian name is Lopaka. I also have a Chinese name. 
My Chinese name is Li Wang Hu. Li Wang Hu means strong king tiger. So my Chinese name is Li Wang Hu. And my Hawaiian name is Lopaka. And my American name is Robert. And my Hebrew name, I have two Hebrew names. My surname is Uriel and Yeshuron. Those are my Hebrew names. Now all those names I have, I do different jobs and I have different administrations. I also want to tell you that my family called me Lee. That's what my mother called me. She called me Lee. So most of my family call me Lee. And so all those names, it means something special to me. And I have different roles and different attributes when people call me by those names. And I understand all of them. Now, in all those roles and all those names that I have, I have different titles and I have different attributes. Like uh, I'm a nurse. The last job I had before I became handicapped, I was a nurse. And uh, before, um, uh, after I was a nurse, I was a supervisor and I had worked supervisor in four departments. And before that, I was a university teacher in China. And uh, the students called me Tiger. Uh, that's what uh, my name is, Strong King Tiger. So my students call me Tiger. My students say, Tiger. But uh, all those names, I have roles, titles, and attributes. Now, I am a brother. I'm a father, I'm an uncle, and I'm a nephew. All of those are attributes. Now, that's not my names. They are attributes. But, like my nephew and my nieces call me Uncle Ling. Those, that's the attributes that I have. And that's a role that I go with that name. But it has to do nothing with all the other things that I do. As far as being a university teacher in China. When my students call me Tiger. Now my family don't call me Tiger. Because they don't know me by Tiger. They, they, don't, they never been to China. They never lived there. And I never taught them Chinese. And I don't speak to them in Chinese. But my students, I speak to them in Chinese. I talk to them in Chinese. And so when they call me Tiger... There's a relationship I have with them with the name of Tiger. Because that's my name. Just like uh, my wife, now she calls me Rob. R-O-B, Rob. She said, hey Rob. Now that's my name she talks to me. And that's our sweet name to each other. And I call her Thuka Thuka. Or Jin Jin. Now, that's her, not her name, but that's a nickname, okay? Now, I have a nickname also. My nickname is Silver. One of my friends gave me that name. Gave me a name, nickname Quicksilver. Now, that's a nickname. I've had other nicknames, but I'm too embarrassed to tell you. <laughs> so, we're just going to leave that alone right there. But I want you to understand the complexity about our God. Now I'm going to go into a little bit more detail in expressing God. Now in his roles in the Old Testament he had different uh, manifestations to the to the prophets of old. How he manifested himself when he was with the children of Israel when he led them out of Egypt. When he appeared to the patriots Abraham Samuel Joshua, he appeared to them in uh, in different forms. 
Now, when he manifested himself as Melchizedek to Abraham, he appeared as a man. He also appeared as um as an angel, the angel of the Lord, or to appear to Abraham when it was in Sodom and Gomorrah, and the two angels went into the city, but the angel that stayed there, he stayed and talked to Abraham. Now that's the angel of the Lord. Now the Lord is also called the captain of the host. He has another title that he has. Okay. So. Now it's his manifestation as a man. He manifested to sh shed blood for our sins. And to be our example. And to do, be our propitiation. He's our perfect example. That he did things that he didn't have to do. But he did it for us. As far as our redemption. For shedding blood. Because there was no one perfect. To shed blood. Because animals couldn't do it. And there was no man that could do it. So he rolled himself in flesh. And shed blood for our sins. Because this is what satisfied. The death of sin. That a life must be given. And the shedding of blood. So this blood. That was shed for us. That he died for our sins. Now this is. Uh, this is the manifestation. As Christ. Now when he manifested himself. As a man. To shed blood for our sins. He took on more attributes. As far as the shepherd. The rose of Sharon. The bright and morning star. He became a good shepherd. The lily of the valley. The lily of the valley. The hope of glory. Our salvation. The lamb. The lamb of God. In fact, all the prophets, they, they saw it. And uh, Abraham said that the Lord will prepare a ram when he told Isaac. He said the Lord will prepare a, a, a sacrifice. He's our perfect sacrifice. He's our high priest. Our advocate. Because he intercedes before us. Now there's not a throne in heaven. That he intercedes for. Someone else. Because God is God. He knows everything. And when the Lord was in the flesh, he prayed. There was no need for him to pray. Because you pray because of sin. You pray because you confess. God Almighty don't need to confess. So he was teaching us how to pray. He came to earth to dwell with us so he could be acquainted with our grief. He was smitten. But it was he that was God who you pierced. It was not his son. It was him. It was him who you pierced. He only taught us how to pray. As baptism the same. He didn't need to be baptized because there was no sin in him. There was no guile found in his mouth. So there was no need for him to be baptized. Are you listening to me? So he was baptized for us to be our example. Now I want to tell you something that you can say, oh, wow, I didn't think about that. Well, the firstborn of the brethren, is he's not the firstborn of the brethren because God is already eternal. He cannot be the firstborn of the brethren because he is already eternal. He came from heaven. He is already eternal. He cannot put on immortality. He is already immortal. He became flesh. He became. He put on mortality to die for our sins because he is already immortality. I'm not going to explain to you the firstborn of immortality. That's another subject. But I want you to understand who God is and how the devil has taken you away. From understanding what the most high to God of the universe has done for you. And that it was you who pierced him. 
and he took on more attributes when he became the what was called the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit uh, takes on some of the same roles as the Father. But when you think about the roles of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost takes on a a con more of a a worldwide presence. But see, God is already worldwide. David said, if I make up my bed in hell, thou art there. And David wrote about that in the Old Testament. So, he is everywhere at the same time. It's his omnipresence. So, when he put on flesh, he put on presence that he can dwell with us so we can be held, we can behold him. So that he can, he tented himself. He rolled himself in flesh so we can behold him. But as as God Almighty, his glory and his, his brilliance is too much. We cannot stand in his presence. We could not look upon him. So he rolled himself in flesh so that he can we can be able to look upon him, see him, feel him, and touch him. That's why the woman with the issue of blood was able to touch him. But when you look at the Bible, and when the angels expresses him from the book of Enoch and even in the book of uh, Revelation, it says how his throne looks and how no eye can behold him. When you, when God is uh, he's in all his glory, no one can look upon him and live. So he tended himself, rolled himself in flesh, that he can shed blood for us, that he can dwell among us. This is how important it is, the role that God did for our salvation when he died for us, for our sins, past, present, and future. But you, whole heart hearted you went and made yourself an image with your own hand, and you bow down and you worship it instead of worshiping the Most High, the God of the universe, the Most High who created all life. You went and made yourself your own God. Oh, the crime that you have committed. Oh, dear one, do you know what you have done? You made a God in your likeness that you love more than the Most High. You made you a white-faced God because you did not appreciate the God of the universe. So you made your God yourself with blue eyes and blonde hair, the one that you love, and you call him Jesus. So you made your own God because the God of the universe, you do not want to worship him in spirit and in truth. So you make your own God with your own hands. Dear one, do you know what you have done? God will not hold you guiltless for this. You need to repent and become godly sorrow. As is written, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. For unto us a child is born, for unto us a child is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. How many Everlasting Fathers are there? There's only one. There's only one Prince of Peace. As it is written, he said, I am the first and the last. The beginning and the end. He said, I am thy savior. He said, I know not any. Besides me, there is no savior. Besides me, he said, there is no God. It was God, I tell you. It was God who was manifested in the flesh. He appeared as a man. And we did not accept him. In fact, we pierced him. Our only savior, we pierced him. It's not the son. It was not God who sent someone to be born. God did not cause a conception to happen in a woman's womb. We're thinking so carnal. Oh, boy, I tell you. It was God who sat down in a woman of a womb. And he was born of a woman. And it was God who did all these things simultaneously. He created the whole earth the world and came and sat in a woman's womb to be born for our sins 
that he might shed blood to be born in the lineage of David because it was prophesied that his his kingdom would have no end and because God is eternal his kingdom will have no end but to fulfill prophecy is not the prophecy of uh, of Genesis 3 15 that is another prophecy that has to be done through a man because God is a spirit and so the prophecy cannot be filled because someone with a physical body had to keep the laws from the beginning of time until the end of time a descendant of Abraham had to keep the law from every generation from the six from the every six civilization that was spoken of in the book of Daniel someone in the in the family of Abraham had to keep the law now I'm the last one until Shiloh comes to keep the law of God. This is the prophecy that no one knows about. The Catholic Church, either they don't know or they have hidden it. But I, I don't know about what the Catholic Church knows. They have changed so many things in the Bible. But I know this is that God is one. I know that God is all in all, in us all, and through us all, and that he's coming back to redeem the nation of Israel and to fulfill the promises of our forefathers. This I know, and it will happen very soon, and he will deal with those who worship idols. He said, I will not give my glory to another, not to graven images. And dear one, you have worship. The Bible says that God desires such ones. As he talked to his disciples, he said, you see those stones there? Now, today they call it the western wall or the, the weeping wall. He said, no, there's no stone will left, be left upon another. He said, no one will worship here in this temple. And believe it, there's no one worship on that temple. And there's no horn in that temple. There's no king there. There's not going to be a king there in Jerusalem until the Lord comes back. Because he has removed the horn. And no one will worship a synagogue in Jerusalem until the Lord comes back. There will be no king there until the Lord comes back. And he will set up a kingdom his earthly kingdom, which will have no end. But I want you to know that you have been worshiping an idol, and the Lord knows it. He knew it from the beginning of time. He told us about it. He said that one will come in mine in his name that you will receive, but you did not receive him. But one will come in his own name, and you receive him. In fact, it's not even a person. It's a picture. Wow. It's a picture. It's not even a person. But you need to repent or things are going to get worse when the Lord comes back. Because he's going to let a fierce demon come in here. And you're going to be tried to know the truth. Whether you're going to accept God and worship him or you're going to continue to worship this idol that you're so in love with right now. That you will either try to kill me or cut my neck off if you knew that I spoke against your sweet Jesus that you love so much. That you're worshiping your idols so dearly that you don't want to let your idols go. But God is going to deal with you when he come back.